Hi guys, today I'm going to give you a little mini lecture on thyroid carcinoma. We had a case come in today and I thought it was an opportunity to discuss the behavior of these relatively uncommon tumors. Overrepresented breeds with thyroid carcinomas include boxers, beagles, and golden retrievers. And the median age for development of these tumors is about 10 years. Now most dogs just present with a ventral cervical mass, although some may also present with dyspnea, dysphonia, or voice change, dysphagia, which is difficulty eating, Horner syndrome, which can occur in patients with damage to the fit, uh, sympathetic trunk in the neck. The diagnosis is generally made just on physical examination. Other differential diagnoses for a ventral cervical mass could include an abscess, Um, salivary mucosal, uh, lymph node enlargement, or other neoplasia. Now, I know I've told you in the past that you always want to biopsy tumors before you take them out, but this would be an exception to that rule. Fine needle aspirate usually only reveals blood in the case of a thyroid carcinoma, um, and biopsy should be avoided because of the risk of hemorrhage. Now, interestingly, if you do aspirate these, while you can't make a definitive diagnosis of thyroid carcinoma, you can rule out, rule out things like an abscess, salivary mucosal, or lymph node enlargement, particularly from lymphoma. Now, in cases where a thyroid carcinoma is suspected, uh, the first thing that you should do is probably take thoracic radiographs, although it's interesting because um, the diagnosis of metastasis Um, at the time of initial detection of the thyroid cancer does not necessarily mean a poor prognostic indicator. So to reiterate that, uh, metastasis at the time of diagnosis does not necessarily impart a grave prognosis. About 33% will have evidence of metastasis at the time of diagnosis, and then a total of between 65 and 90% will eventually develop metastasis during the course of the disease. Now, when available, I do like to do a CT scan of the neck um, for staging and to determine whether the tumor is going to be resectable or not. Um, And MRI would be equally, if not more helpful. Ultrasound can also be of benefit in determining the size of the tumor and possibly involvement of other vascular structures and that sort of thing. Now this image here shows a 3D volume rendering CT scan of a thyroid carcinoma and it's amazing the anatomic detail that we can see. For example, we have the jugular vein sitting here, carotid artery sitting here, the bifurcation of the jugular vein into the linguofacial vein and the maxillary vein and we can see the mandibular salivary gland sitting here. The other diagnostic test which can be helpful is scintigraphy when it's available because this can show uh, the extents of the, the tumor locally, it can show evidence of metastatic disease, and it can also show uh, whether there's ectopic thyroid tissue uh, in the uh, cervical region or even in the thorax. The other thing that scintigraphy does is tells us if the tumor is functional or not. 
and only about 10% of thyroid tumors are functional, uh, but there's kind of a anecdotal evidence to suggest that maybe functional tumors are less malignant because uh, they have enough normal tissue to produce thyroid hormone. Now surgery is the most commonly used treatment for these and it's probably the most effective uh, when uh, surgical excision is possible. Uh, in unresectable tumors, you can do radiation therapy either in the form of external beam radiation or uh, radioactive iodine. Now I have included a QR code for a YouTube video uh, of the removal of a thyroid carcinoma uh, on our Southpaws Vet YouTube channel. Prognostic indicators for thyroid carcinomas uh, include the size of the tumor with tumors greater than 20 cubic centimeters having a poor prognosis or greater than five centimeters in diameter having uh, a poor prognosis. Uh, bilateral disease is also a very poor prognostic indicator, um, occurs relatively infrequently, although we certainly have seen it, um, and that uh, increases the risk of metastasis by 16 times. Um, that's another indication for doing imaging of the neck in the form of either CT, MRI, or ultrasound to confirm whether or not bilateral disease is existing. The other really important prognostic indicator is the mobility of the tumor with um, mobile tumors living an average of three years after surgery and fixed tumors only living an average of about 10 months after surgery. So in summary, uh, with thyroid tumors, the first thing is we're going to detect a ventral cervical mass. We're going to rule out other conditions like salivary mucosal abscess uh, or lymphoma. We're going to determine if it's movable or not, and that's going to be prognostic uh, uh, for long-term survival. Uh, we're going to perform imaging to determine the size of the tumor, resectability, and to uh, determine if we have bilateral disease. And all of these are going to be prognostic and they're also going to help determine whether surgery is an option. Now, if surgery is an option, that's going to give us our best chance for long-term survival. Um, and if surgery is not possible, uh, then radiation therapy still provides a reasonable long-term survival with a median survival time of around two years. As always, please subscribe to our channel and feel free to post comments uh, uh, if you'd like regarding this or any other of our videos. Thanks for watching.